In this video, I'm bringing you a review on the brand new Suzuki Avenis 125, all fresh for Euro 5 emissions for 2023. We're here at MK Don Stadium for the press day on this bad boy. I'm gonna give you all the good bits, the bad bits, and why I've been quite impressed. So here we go everybody, this is the 2023 Suzuki Venice 125, all new for this year and it's meeting Euro 5 standards. The Venice 125 is very much the sporty offering out of the two. They're fundamentally kind of the same bike underneath. Now the engine is only a 124cc uh, air-cooled single cylinder engine that puts out 8.6 horsepower which isn't the biggest amount in the world but it does pack 10 newton meters of torque which is quite decent for acceleration. Now. 8.6 horsepower is not a lot, even for a 125cc scooter where the limit is about 14.7 horsepower for a uh, CBT friendly 125. However, how this has been designed, it is sprightly up to 40, 50 miles an hour, so you won't be disappointed there. And fuel economy is about 148 miles per gallon top of the range, which means this little 5, 5.2 litre fuel tank can go up to, I think it's about 160, 170 miles in range on a full tank, which is pretty darn badass in my opinion. So it's got the Asatix, but it is a proper true commuter scooter. Places like this, like Milton Keynes, towns and cities, where you're not going to get much above kind of 40, 50 miles an hour. It's perfect. Small, but good proportions. Nice and nimble, thanks to the 12 inch front wheel, 10 inch rear. As you can tell, the Avenis is sharp, dynamic, and much more sporty and kind of aimed at the younger market. So yeah, the Avenis 125 is available in two colors. We've got this one here, which is my favorite, which is the green and gray. And then there's a white and gray option as well. So all in all, it's quite a nice looking scooter, mostly LED lighting. Um, but we, as you can see here, we've got bulb indicators there. But the styling is much more aggressive the, than the address. So this little cool sporty frank here with the visor on top. We've got the upswept back end. And of course, quite differently, we have the fuel cap on the rear. So you can fill up there without the hassle of it being under the seat or at the front there. But it is a nice, really quite tidy bike. Now, although it looks sporty, it's still aimed at inner cities. It's it's under nine horsepower, 8.6 horsepower. So all in all, it's, it's, it looks great. And it's obviously at that uh, younger market, but it's still a nice, gonna be reliable. Let's face it, it's a Suzuki low capacity scooter. We expect to do lots of trouble free miles on this, but it is going to be very economical as well. But it looks, I have to say it looks rather nice indeed. And that colorway is awesome. This one is what I'd pick. We've got the sharp mud guard on the front. We've got a 12 inch wheel at the front and a 10 inch to the rear. I think it's a 90 wide and a 100 wide on the back there. And we've got Dunlop tires on both. So here we go everybody on the Avenis 125cc scooter. So this bad boy starts at £2,699 and its brother, sister, whatever you want to call it, is the Address 125. And that bad boy is just ahead of us there. So the Avenis 125 is a part of a free bike or free scooter launch from Suzuki. The Address 125 that you see ahead of me, the Avenis and also the Bergman which will come out in a few months time. Now the Address and the Avenis, although look completely different underneath, are fundamentally the same scooters. But when you look at the thing, quite big differences. The engine is the same, the 124cc single cylinder air cooled engine which is Euro 5 compliant and it packs about 8.6 horsepower and 10 newton meters of torque, which isn't the biggest horsepower in the world, but how they've engineered this thing, it's actually quite sprightly. That torque there means that it's actually rather sprightly. And in towns and cities, much like Milton Keynes and Bletchley and Newport Pagnall kind of area where I am now, it's absolutely ideal. You get up to 40, 45, 50 miles an hour quite respectfully. Yeah, it's at 60. I'm really quite impressed, I thought, these scooters will struggle to get past 55 but in fact it gets to 60 pretty darn well and the initial acceleration is a mean that you're not sitting at a roundabout waiting for the power to come in for a little 125cc scooter it actually means that you can, you can jet away pretty darn safely so if you don't already know bike matters our youtube channel is powered by lexham insurance who are motorcycle and scooter insurance specialists in the uk not only do they make it possible for us to put out this type of content 
where they give our viewers in the UK a cool little opportunity of saving up to £20 off their insurance premium. Just click the link in the top right hand corner now, that'll take you through to their quotation form, and the price at the end will automatically have £20 deducted. Now when it comes to braking, we have a, I think it's a 190mm disc at the front and a 120 drum on the back. And obviously we're running combined braking system at this kind of price point and place in the market, which is to be expected, I think, you know, if you're, if you're paying a grand more, then yeah, you'd, you'd expect at least ABS on the front. But no, for this price point, it's what you'd expect. Um, and the brakes do the job, you know, more than adequately. I've had no concerns or fears yet hitting the brakes hard which on a ride like this you tend to be. Now suspension wise we have telescopic forks at the front and a monoshock to the rear. The suspension is what you'd expect in a, on a scooter like this. You'll feel lumps and bumps with typical UK potholes, that is for sure. But generally town and city riding is going to be rather pleasant. So the seat seems quite comfortable, I'm obviously swapping between this and the address on this press day. But it seems rather comfortable, decent size. Also, it's that kind of material which means it's easy to move about on, but you're not slipping and sliding all the bloody time, which is very nice. Some, some seats can really, really be very, very slidey. Not this one. Oh, we're greeted by lots of potholes, good old GB roads. Now under that seat, I think it's just over 21, is it 21 and a half litres of storage space? Which means I'm not convinced we're gonna fit a full face helmet. You'll probably fit an open face, but it is just worth checking. And we do have on the back of the leg shield here a closable little glove box not lockable closable and the usb charging port is in there and to the right hand side there's an open little cubby hole for lobbing in a drink or whatnot your gloves if you come to a little uh, stop for a few minutes now we've got this awesome digital display here it's not full color it's not super fancy but what it is it's large enough displays the right information and nicely spaced out that you're not searching around for the information you've got your odometer speedometer clock fuel gauge etc it's all there average consumption the lot so the dash itself although it's not a crazy bright day it is quite overcast it looks really nice and clear so far and it's a decent size and as i say i'm not searching for information it's lovely and clear the switch gear as well we have to admit this is a budget scooter when you look at other ones from china especially the switch gear can be really quite flimsy or a little bit concerning and the whole you know array here with the the dash itself can look a bit dated but on the on the suzuki they've done a grand job with this the switch gear Again, it's nothing crazy, but it does the job really well and it feels decent to the touch. Mirrors for a little scooter. You know, I'm probably missing 20 to 30% of my arms while I haven't really adjusted these mirrors fully to its right potential yet. So decent visibility. One thing I can say sitting on this thing, I think the address has got a little bit more foot room. So what are the good bits and bad bits to summarise on the Venice 125? Well, for me, I've been really quite impressed. I thought coming into this, the quality could be a little bit on the naff side and the engine could be disappointing. I completely eat my words. For this price point, at just over two and a half grand, it has really impressed me. The engine is sprightly. It gets up to 40, 50 miles per hour extremely well. And with up to 148 miles per gallon, this thing will just go on and on forever. The quality as well. This thing is really refined. The dash, the switch gear for two and a half grand. It's one of the best bikes on the market at this price point, no doubt. For the cons, you're lacking a little bit of luggage space. You've got a combined braking system. But that's all what you expect for this price point. So for me, Suzuki have really knocked it out of the park here. So there you go, that is my full review on the Suzuki Avenis 125. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. And if you want to see a video on the Suzuki Address 125, make sure to click that link.